What's up guys, it's Lucci here, and today we're doing something a little bit different. I want to extend a hand to all the PC players out there playing Warzone and grinding their asses off, and just kind of show you guys what, in my opinion, are some of the best graphical settings that you can have while playing Call of Duty Warzone. Um, this video is going to be heavily unedited, and it's pretty much just going to get right into it with what my settings are, and why I have made the decisions I have behind those settings. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. If you're not already subscribed here, consider hitting that sub button. It's much appreciated. Also leave a like rating on the video and let me know what you enjoyed most about today's video down in the comments below. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So for this video, we're pretty much gonna be assuming that we wanna get the best possible looking game while also having the best performance. So it's not gonna be some super try hard performance maxer where we, you know, we, we crank all the settings to low. No, we want the game to look good. And especially for me as a content creator, I want the game to look pretty good, but also play the best I can without, you know, putting too much stress on my video card and PC altogether. So first, com first things first, absolutely on PC, you wanna be playing Playing in full screen. Uh, there, the other options here are windowed, full screen borderless, and full screen extended window. But as you can see, the VRAM usage in the top right there is going to go is going to go down when we play full screen. Pretty much, your PC is only going to be focusing on the game when you're in full screen mode and not processing anything else in the background. You can see how high the jump goes to your RAM usage, your video RAM usage when you put it on borderless or extended window. Uh, windowed is obviously going to drop the usage lower, but who is playing any FPS title on windowed? That's just not an option. That's for multitasking purposes. I don't think you should ever play on windowed. So full screen is definitely the option here. Uh, your display monitor is obviously just whatever whatever monitor you're, you're gaming on. So that's pretty self-explanatory. This is just your video card and screen refresh rate. Obviously, I play on a 144 hertz monitor. You're going to want to want to go ahead and set this to whatever your monitor's refresh rate is. So the highest you can go, it's going to match your monitor's refresh rate and you're going to get the smoothest performance in game. Render resolution, I recommend if possible, you always keep this at 100. You can lower this to get better performance if you're playing on a lower end PC. Um, but as you lower it, as you can see on the left, I'm um, sorry, on the right hand side of the screen, the lower you go, the more grainy the picture you're going to see is going to get. So I recommend keeping this on 100 so it matches your monitor's current um, resolution. Aspect ratio I have set to automatic. I'm leaving that alone. Sync every frame I have disabled. You should keep it disabled. Just trust me on that one. Uh, custom frame limit. Now, a lot of people have different varying answers on what they think is the best. Should you set your should you set a custom frame limit or should you leave it unlimited? I personally leave mine unlimited and I've never had a problem with screen tearing or anything like that. So this one's kind of up to you. A lot of people like to leave their frame limit uh, to match their monitor's refresh rate. I kind of don't have an opinion on that either way. I've always left mine unlimited in every game and I've never seen any problems. This next option for NVIDIA highlights is completely personal. If you want the game to record your kills and highlight moments within Warzone or Modern Warfare in general, great. Um, this one's completely up to you. It's not going to affect your performance either way. Restart shaders installation. That's kind of irrelevant to our graphics here. Uh, display gamma. I have mine set to whatever it automatically set to. I wouldn't worry about this too much. Now we start getting to the meat and potatoes of stuff. Okay, so texture resolution. This one has a big impact on your video RAM usage, as you can see by the top left, um, top right, I'm sorry, I keep saying top left. As you can see by the top right over there, as I go higher and higher, the tiers of usage of my VRAM jumps significantly. So on the left hand image, we have it all the way set to low, and you can see how it's very grainy and kind of looks like crap, to say the least. And on the right hand, we have it on the highest. I like to go, and this is depending on what your PC can handle, I like to keep it at normal. Uh, there's a very big jump between normal to high, and I don't think I need to have it on high and put more stress on my video card, especially since I like to record and stream. So normal seems to be a pretty good uh, middle ground for me. The game looks great. Doesn't look grainy and pixelated, but it's not so high that I'm putting unnecessary stress on my video card. Again, texture resolution completely up to you. If your computer can handle high, put it on high. Mine probably can, but I prefer to run normal and play it safe. Next, we got texture filter anisotropic. I I'm hope I'm saying that right. Anyway, I keep this on high just because I think the game and the textures look better, as you can see on the right hand image, and it doesn't affect my video RAM usage in any way. I've always kept it on high and the game runs just fine like that. Again, particle quality, same thing here. Doesn't affect my video RAM usage at all, so I keep it on high. Why not? 
bullet impacts and sprays, I turn these on. Just a little more realistic and something cool that doesn't affect your game FPS or anything like that. As you can see, it's just going to show your impact holes from bullets and other projectiles. Tessellation, to be honest with this setting, just comparing the two images, I don't really see a difference that would be game changing for me at all. Um, it just changes the amount of some scene geometry that receives subdivision. It's a lot of technical terms that I could care less about with this particular setting. All I know is it doesn't affect my game at all, so I keep it on all. Next, we come to another big deal breaker for a lot of people's uh, GPUs, and that is shadows. Now, shadow map resolution, I keep on low. And as you can see, there's, there's a pretty substantial jump there between low and high. And... Honestly, looking and comparing at the two pictures and what I've seen in game. And honestly, looking at the two, I just don't see it necessary. And it doesn't make that big of a difference to me to warrant leaving this on anything other than low. I think shadows in most games should be turned to low because you get better performance with it. Again, if you want to run them higher, great. I keep shadows on low. How do you say this? Is it cache? Cache? I'm going to say cache. Cache spot shadows disabled. Cache sun shadows I also have disabled. Oh my god, say that 10 times fast. Particle lighting. Um, I just... I leave this on ultra because it doesn't affect anything that I've seen in game. Um, again, VRAM usage doesn't change at all when you go from low to, low to ultra. So if it's going to make the game look a little bit better and not impede my, my performance, uh, great, we'll keep it on ultra. Uh, Direct X Ray Tracing, it does have a pretty substantial jump in RAM usage, so I keep this disabled because I just do not see the point of it uh, being on, so I would disable this. Ambient Occlusion I have disabled. SSR or Screen Space Reflection I have disabled. And then we get down to, this is in my opinion guys, probably the, the focal point of this video of what you need to turn off or on. And most of this stuff is going to be disabled down here because it's a complete waste of time to have it on. It makes the game look way worse in any situation. And I can't see a situation where you would want to have any of this on. So for anti-aliasing, I will say this. Looking at the two pictures on the right hand side of the screen here, the one on the left is with no anti-aliasing and the one on the right is with the one with uh, filmic anti-aliasing. Um, Basically, anti-aliasing is just going to smoothen out edges and stuff like that. So if you have no anti-aliasing, it's going to look jagged. I do a lot of streaming and content creation, so I like to have the images look as smooth and, and natural as possible. So I, I rock full anti-aliasing here, to be honest with you. You can turn it off if you're not planning on, you know, making YouTube content or TikTok content or streaming. If you're not worried about the jagged edges or producing content, you can turn it off. It's completely up to you. I see no negative side effects by having it on and making my game look a little better, so I like to keep anti-aliasing on for my personal uses. Um, depth of field. Turn this off. Disable it. All it's going to do is on the right, you can see when you zoom in, everything everything besides what you're ADS'd on gets blurry, and that's going to make you pretty much less aware of your surroundings. It's going to make it harder to track enemies that might be coming in from your left or right. Everything's going to be a little more blurry and hard to see. Disable depth of field, trust me. Filmic strength, just go ahead and turn this right off. You don't want it on, it's just going to make your picture quality go down. World motion blur, this should be a given. Unless you want to get nauseous and everything around you get blurry whenever you make any type of movement, I, I don't understand why else you want to have it on. Turn world motion blur off. Weapon motion blur, same thing. Look at that image. You don't want to be seeing that. You want everything clean and smooth. Turn weapon motion blur, up, blur off. Film grain, you're going to want to disable this, turn it all the way down to zero. You can see in the image on the right, left is going to be with no film grain, right is with full film grain. Film grain literally just makes the image grainier and it's you need to turn it off. Now I'm just going to hop over into the general settings because I feel like this does pertain to graphic settings in Warzone and Call of Duty in general. Uh, there's only a couple things I'm going to talk about here. Actually, it's mainly just one and then that that is field of view. Um, as a PC player, we have access to change our field of view to whatever we feel is the most beneficial to us. Now, consoles are stuck to one field of view, so that is one advantage that PC players get over console. And I think that everybody, if your PC can handle it, which it should be able to, should max out their field of view to 120 on PC. 
It's a very simple explanation of why, but if you just take a look at the... Oh, sorry about that. It's a very simple explanation of why, but if you just take a look over at the picture on the right-hand side, you can see with 120 FOV, you're able to see more peripheral vision to the left and right, that is, uh, and up and down. So you can see more of what's going on on the map. Now, the one small downside of this is targets that are in front of you might look a little bit smaller because the image can be stretched a little bit. But with 120, you're going to be able to see more things coming into your field of view a lot faster than, say, someone play, playing on 80 FOV or 60. God forbid you would ever play that low. But you can see the difference on what type of stuff you can see on the map. With that being said, I think most people should be playing on 120 FOV if their PCs can handle it because you're going to get the best bang for your buck. And it's a huge advantage that us PC players have over console. That's pretty much it, guys. I just wanted to make this quick graphics guide for PC. It's not a long video, but I feel like a lot of people could gain some knowledge on overall what the best settings are, which ones you could just turn off and get rid of completely because they're not doing anything but hurting your visual quality in the game, and which ones will actually help boost performance or not. So if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. If I, if I said something maybe you don't agree with and maybe you have more knowledge on me then, Feel free to comment and let me know and we can discuss it. And uh, other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Be sure to check out the stream and all of my social media links in the description below. I will also put some links to some of my recent Warzone videos for you to check out as well. Other than that, guys, love you as always. Peace.